technology, and we discussed for a few minutes the technology as a nature of creating, encouraging, accelerating new technologies being created. And that data has become a deluge. It is now terabytes and terabytes of data. Um, there are industry vertical. Every industry vertical is experiencing this data explosion. New problems have come about. I have Magic Jack. How many of you have heard of Magic Jack? Non-Indian, right? You heard of Magic Jack, right? This is a small device that you can plug into your IT-enabled computer. Then it is a phone. And the beauty of this is I could bring that Magic Jack that I have at home and start my computer, plug this here. My telephone number is here. So if 732, set number, your girlfriend's number appears on your screen, her home phone number appears on your screen, that is no longer an implication that she's at home. Do you understand what I'm saying? Before, my manager used to call me at home. Whenever I say I got some work at home, I'm coming late. So he'd call me at home. Make sure I'm at home, because he called my home phone. Now that I'm running Magic Jack, couldn't tell where the hell I am. Could be anywhere I want, and I'll get this call. So technology, innovation, is completely changing things. And one of the things that has happened is, if you are a phone company, subject to government regulation, it says track XYZ's phone calls going where from where, I got a big nightmare in my hands because Raman is one day calling from Homedale, New Jersey, another day is calling from Pauly, another day is from Warren, New Jersey, Citibank. It just keeps moving. So it is no longer that old devices that AT&T built are sufficient to deal with new problems. And protocols, Standardization, we discussed about this. If you want to exchange information between units, you need a standard way, and we need to be able to exchange information. In order to keep that meaningful, we need metadata. That everybody says the same thing and means the same thing. That's important. Now we're going to look at certain other characteristics of data. How many of you have heard of triple V? Anybody here heard of triple V? What do you think this means? In the data world, it means variety, velocity, and volume. Because now, if you are a Citibank employee, like I was running this company, brokerage, every day, my database was increasing by 30 gigabytes, every day. So 30 days goes by. I need a new terabyte of disk. That's why Ravi is teaching another course called Cloud, so that you can just expand your data storage as much as you want. That's another technology that's cutting out operation cost. And it was natural, right? Because think of a day when there were no clouds. And poor Raman running this uh, brokerage needs a terabyte every month. He needs to go to Cisco, buy a new device. That means go to the finance department, get an approval, send it to the procure department, they procure it, and then the technology comes in, installs it. So I got a big cycle. I'm wasting a lot of time, even though I know I need this space. Tell it to me. So what does cloud technology allow me to do? It says, don't worry about it. You want 30 gigabytes today, you get 30 gigabytes today. You want 30 gigabytes tomorrow, you get that. You don't need to buy, you don't do anything, you just keep using whatever data storage you need. So it completely cuts the operation costs. This is process innovation, but it again limits, takes out a limit. So, and this VVV means in data world, velocity at which data is being created and variety in which data is being created because you have new 
YouTube. So when there is, say, unrest in Syria, I can see it. When there is an earthquake in Himalayas, in India, which I am very fond of, I can know it. Or they won the cricket match today, I know it. Because this information is being exchanged, I can see how they played those strokes if I want to. If there are YouTubes that are available. So information is now available in a variety of formats. Volume of data. So before I wrote 500 lines of text to describe what I saw in Trafalgar Square or the French Revolution that took place. There's no video of the guillotine being used. That is, we know completely video pictures of Tiananmen Square. The downside of that is, this is gigabytes, that's bytes. So volume has increased, variety has increased, the velocity at which this information is moving is also increased. That's the big data problem. Now once we have separated all these things, there is audio, there is video, there is text, then somebody out there is saying, hey, I don't want all these three different formats combined on for me. I don't know what Tom Brokaw said, I don't know what I saw on YouTube, combine them for me. So there is, there is a big push to say, you have a unified communication channel through which you can communicate with video, you communicate with audio, and all of that can be streamed, synchronized at the same time. So immediately it's giving, you can see, this cycle being played out, new technology creating new limits, and intelligent people going after that saying, we are going to resolve this so such limits don't exist, and we'll have new technologies. So in the finance world, what I was trying to get at, they have many, many protocols. In finance world, information is Power, information is profit, information is value. If you know exactly what that security is being valued at first, before everybody else knew, then you have an edge against the other players in the market. This is very, very important for them. So they created Fidelity, most of you might have heard, and uh, Solomon Smith Barney, Solomon Brothers. You probably know, but how many of you know about Solomon Brothers? There used to be a big company called Solomon Brothers, very, very successful. And that company and Fidelity joined together, created a protocol called FIX, Financial Information Exchange, so that they could efficiently exchange buying and selling information instantaneously across anywhere in the world at any time from any number of parties. And they created that. That addressed only certain parts of the market, equities. So some of the guys said, hey, if fix is only for equities, I need it for derivatives, I need it for futures, let me create FTR. <coughs> so they have created another language to exchange information in the financial capital markets in different segments. Then government came along, look, I need to find out who's paying how much tax, who generated how much revenue, we need a business, in business to business information exchange, B2B exchange protocol, they gave rise to XBRL. So there is a number of standards that are coming from this world. Actually, it's coming from STML, HTML, giving rise to these kinds of languages, where ML stands for mark of language. Okay. This, this SGML means simple, generalized markup language. That is probably the most powerful markup language in which you can capture any kind of information. And then somebody said, oh, it's too complicated for this time and age. Let's simplify it for just text, and that became hypertext. That's the HTML. And somebody said, I'm going to use it. In the financial world, it became financial protocol markup language, product markup language, which allows you to exchange information products. 
I can't be this far, I didn't have space there, so I came here. So one of the problems that happens when we look at data as a life cycle, right? We generate, we storage, we retrieve, and then we analyze. So retrieval is an important aspect of enterprise data management. Not only capturing it, storing it, and then being able to retrieve it as you need. Suppose, how many of you have any kind of uh, forgetfulness? As you can imagine, I have a lot of that. Sometimes I won't be able to recall anything that I want to do. I pay a major price. Suddenly I don't remember where I kept my car keys. So five minutes goes by, I'm late. Because I missed the bus train. So that's retrieval. That is retrieval. Right? So if you are a trader, and data is being accumulated, but you can't retrieve it at the rate at which you want to retrieve, you're not going to be able to do business. So retrieval is an important problem. And you can see it has given rise to new industries. Google, YouTube, Yahoo, for example, Ask, Ask Jeeves, so many, Expedia, so many things. Specialized information retrieval protocols. If you go to uh, kayak.com, have you ever been to kayak.com? So who can tell me what it does? Anybody who has used Kayak, how is it different? What does it take? What's your name? Nestle. Nestle, tell me. Uh, it sells plane tickets and uh, it finds the cheaper ticket, cheap, cheapest ticket. Okay, very good. That is hard, but that's not the edge. It's doing something else. Also. Booking hotel. Your name? Burak. Burak, tell me. Booking hotel, cheapest travel programs. Would you think everybody in this room, if I just told you a cheapest price and allowed you to book, you would be happy? Human mind wants to confirm that. What else can you do with kayak.com? It tells you one other thing. It shows you multiple websites. Everybody in the world who is selling that, at what price they are selling, and where, that's when I will buy. If you just give me the cheapest price, I have my little doubt. Where is this guy making this money? Is it out of my pocket? But once they lay out all the Expedia, what is selling, what is Priceline doing it for, blah this, blah that, then I'm very happy I got the cheapest price. So that's the kayak is playing into that, your mind, saying I not only give you the best price, but I also give you the confidence in what you just did. You did it at the best price. So, and Google, of course, allows you to search photos, audios, images, whatever you want. You put in volcano, and you say, I want to see images, you will show you volcano. If it's, if it's, so it knows about to connect an image with what you need. So retrieval is a rich problem. So that's how it knows how to direct you in traffic, to go take a right, left, geographical information system. And all of you know about GPS. You can go anywhere you want with the GPS because it tells you how to get there. That is also connected to visualization now, right? So you can see how this data immediately manifests, allows itself to be transformed, presented in zillion different ways, and to be retrieved. Now we are watching the beginning of a new revolution. Pretty soon, there will not be any keyboard. How many of you have seen on Google uh, browser, there's a little mic? You know what it does? Have you seen this? You've not seen this, Barack? I don't remember. Uh, maybe you don't remember. You have a retrieval problem here. You need a retrieval from this guy. But anyway, so all it, all it does is, look, me typing something, right? I introduce a spelling error. Gives me some bullshit. I don't get what I want. So what Google is saying, why should people type? Let them speak into their mics, and I'll search based on that speech. So you, yes. Correct. And same thing happened with Sprint 15 years ago. Sprint is an excellent.